Hello, my name is Dan. Uh, in this video, um, I wanted to talk about the file Etsy FSTAB. So I am running a uh, uh, Ubuntu 16.4.1 on a virtual machine here. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and first pull up the man page on the Etsy FSTAB. <coughs> Etsy FSTAB. Uh, oh. Hold on, I'm going to pull up the man page on the FSTAB file here. There we go. Okay. So FSTAB is a static information about the file systems. It lives at Etsy FSTAB. The F file FSTAB contains descriptive information about the file system the system can mount. Uh, so it's only read by programs and not written. And uh, so basically, let me pull it up here, Van. Etsy FSTAB. <coughs> so FSTAB basically is used to, um, to configure static file mount points. Um, so if we take a look at uh, this one, so each entry, um, there's an entry for each device and mount point, and so this is for the root file device. And I'll go ahead and just <clears throat> talk a little bit about what the different options here do. So, uh, the first of all, the device to be mounted is going to be identified uh, in the first, the first column. So that's UUID. Uh, and if we go ahead and let me just exit out here, I'll go ls block dash f to see UUID. We can see that SDA1, uh, file type ext4, is that UUID, and that one right there is going to match this. Um, so that's the root file system. Next on uh, the next column on the line is going to be the mount point for that file system, <coughs> and so that's right there at root. The next is going to be the type of file system, which is an ext4. The next option is going to be, uh, or the next column is going to be for options. Um, there are a ton of different options. If we go back to the man page, um, <clears throat> we can see, let's go down here, uh, the fourth field is mount options. So defaults is going to be using uh, these defaults. <clears throat> and then there's several different other options, enough that I'm not really going to go into it, but you can really specify whether or not you want the, uh, the file system to be mounted as read-write or read-only. Uh, you can specify whether or not you want it to be uh, automatically mounted at boot or not automatically mounted. Specify uh, whether uh, users, uh, certain users are able to mount it or just root. Uh, and then here, if you look back at this, what I have here, and this is just a base configuration on this clean Ubuntu installation that I have here. It just specifies that if there's any errors, you should, uh, it should, the file should be, or excuse me, the file system should be remounted as read only. Um, <clears throat> the next two columns are fairly interesting. This first one, uh, or this uh, next one is called the sixth column, or excuse me, the uh, fifth column, is uh, used by a program, read by a program called Dump. Now, as far as I can tell, Dump is actually deprecated and really kind of legacy right now. If we read the, uh, <clears throat> the man page, it says, this field is used by Dump uh, to determine which file systems need to be dumped. Defaults to zero if not present. Um, <clears throat> From everything that I've read, dump uh, really isn't used anymore. It's kind of tar has sort of taken its place. I actually went ahead and downloaded dump. So if we go look at dump, uh, we can see that <coughs> dump is a uh, ext234 file system backup. Um, <coughs> however, if we go down, um, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, like watch. So if we, uh, if we search for tape, you can see all of those places where, so basically <clears throat> it's referring to backup medium as tape. And I know that it's that's still used in some instances, but uh, but for the most part, uh, you know, I'm, I've never used tape, so I'm not really gonna use dump probably. I'm just gonna stick with tar. Um, <clears throat> so exit out of that. So basically uh, everything that I've read, you can just keep a zero as a no dump uh, in this six column if we look back at the FSTAB file. And then the, Last column, uh, the and F stab, the sixth column uh, specifies this is a file check file system pass or number. So this is the field is used by a FS check to determine the order in which file system checks are done at boot time. Um, <clears throat> the root should always be one, and that'll be the first file system to check at boot time. Uh, and then everything else can be two, you know, or three. Uh, this second part, the second line here, the only other one I have, that's actually swap. You can tell by the type and the, or the mm -hmm. file system is swap. And then that SW right here for options is kind of just a uh, placeholder. <clears throat> uh, 
and uh, no mount point, uh, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> and that has a zero dump uh, and a zero for pass. Um, so that's the basics. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just add a line. Now, I've done this in a couple of other videos, and this is fairly uh, standard. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a line. Um, oh, and it's saying that it's in read only. There's that. So let me pull, click. Okay. Uh, let me redo this here. So what I'm going to do is if we take a look on the right side of the screen, you can see up here that I've actually uh, recently created on this installation uh, a logical volume uh, called Ubuntu VG root uh, that spanned over SDB and SDC. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. I'm going to automatically mount that uh, onto, um, well, I think there is a, I think I have uh, Apache downloaded into here, uh, and I don't. So I'm just going to go ahead and automatically mount it onto mount uh, just for the sake of easiness right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go UUID. I'm going to separate it a little bit so it's easier to see. UUID, and then I am going to... Well, I'm gonna. I thought I had it copied, but I'm gonna go ahead and just enter it manually. Uh, six five B dash C eighteen F dash four one nine one dash A C eight F dash five zero three one six C three zero EC81. Okay. And now the file system type uh, is ext4 and or excuse me the new or the next field is the mount point so I'm going to put it on to uh, root mount and then the next uh, option is going to be the file system type ext4. Then I'm just going to go defaults uh, for the options and I'm going to go 0 for the dump and I'm going to go 2 for the check. Okay. And so assuming that I got that UUID right, which I'm just double checking right now, it looks correct to me. When I go ahead and I'm going to write this out, boom, okay. And you can see, let's see. So one of the things actually that's interesting is, so if I, if I take a look at my file systems right now, we can see that the Ubuntu VG root uh, on the right hand side of the screen uh, is not mounted anywhere. Now one of the things is that fstab is read by mount not only at boot uh, but it's also referenced by mount itself. So if I were to run mount uh, and let's just say well let's change into sudo first. Okay. Let's go mount slash mount. It returned with no errors. If I check ls block we can see that Ubuntu VG root is now mounted uh, at slash mount. The reason that is is because uh, before, if, it's, if there's no entry in FSTAB uh, for that particular device, then I have to specify both the device to be mounted and the place to be mounted to. However, if there is an entry in FSTAB and one of those uh, command line arguments for mount is not supplied, mount will actually go in and read FSTAB uh, and come up with the, uh, either the mount point or the device to be mounted by itself. Um, so that's one, one good thing. Um, so now I will go ahead and uh, unmount and again take a look on the right hand side of the screen. No more mount. It's not mounted anymore. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is reboot and what we'll see again if, or, and apparently I entered that UUID right because mount worked with just that argument or the mount point argument. So what's going to happen is the system is going to boot and pull up a terminal ls block and you can see that the logical volume uh, Ubuntu VG root is mounted on slash mount so that's uh, adding something to the fstab file so now what happens if 
the FSTAB file is damaged uh, or lost or for whatever reason the system cannot find it. So uh, that is the question that we're going to go through now. So what we're going to do is we're going to move Etsy FSTAB to Etsy bad stab. And we're going to reboot. Now let's uh, find out what happens. Initially, uh, what I had thought uh, when I did this first uh, was that the system was just not going to boot at all. Uh, and indeed, interestingly enough, uh, it looks like it's having an issue. Let's just go ahead for the sake of this uh, for the sake of this video, we're just going to go ahead and uh, force a reboot here. Uh, and it's giving me some errors. Lately, my virtual machines have kind of been on the fritz. Um, however, uh, it's interesting. There it is. So this has not happened bef <laughs> before to me, <laughs> but uh, let's see where we're at, uh, just for the sake of fun. So it's asking me for a login, um, and so I'm going to try my login. Okay, so actually this is where I ended up before, just a little differently. If you take a look at the error screens, what you see is that certain things are not available or... Uh, we are not able to accomplish them uh, because, uh, and I lack a cursor here, um, or excuse me, a, uh, a mouse to highlight things. But if you look closely, it says that it is a read-only file system. However, I have logged in uh, under my you know proper username. Uh, if I uh, take a look at my current working uh, directory, I am in home. If I look at root. It looks like I have a full root system. If I look at root dev, uh, ls root dev, seems to be everything there. ls proc, seems to be everything there. If I look at mounted file systems, I see that SDA1 is mounted on root. My root file system is mounted on root. However, uh, Ubuntu VG root, the logical volume, is not mounted. So what's happened is I'm in the system, but if I, let's say, okay, so this was caused by uh, no FSTAB file, right? So let's say, oh, oh and now it's, uh, oh, okay. Well, so let's say sudo move Etsy bad. Oh, and it's not going to do tab completes in here uh, for whatever reason. Uh, so we'll go sudo etsy bad stab, and we want to move that to etsy f stab. But of course, it says cannot move read only file system. So, how do we get out of this? Well, what we need to do <coughs> is we need to sudo mount and dash o remount read write of dev. SDA1. So what we need to do is remount uh, the root file system as uh, RW, which is, excuse me, read write. So we do that, and what happens? Boom. The desktop comes up, and seems to be, well, let me not speak too soon. Okay. Uh, pull up a terminal here. LS block. So it seems to be, you know, working fine. Uh, let's except if you notice that there is no more swap partition mounted. So we don't have swap, uh, but we have the root file system. We have a desktop environment uh, and should have full functionality. Um, so now if we try to sudo move Etsy. It's like a type, bad stab to Etsy F stab. 
Okay, so that worked. Um, now, uh, so what we can do is we're just gonna I'm just gonna try to reboot again, and my virtual machine may freak out again. And indeed, it looks like it's going to. So once again. going to go ahead and force a restart. Now, obviously, this isn't, uh, uh, no, obviously, this isn't recommended. Um, however, for the purposes of this, this is just a, uh, a VM that I kind of, uh, you know, redo every so often as I need it. Um, and boom. Okay. So with the F, uh, FSTAB file back, we are back online. Well, at least it boots normally, as it should, uh, to the desktop environment. Now I want to check here for mounted volumes or mounted devices, uh, LS block. And we can see that we are back to having SDA1. We're back to having swap where it should be. We're back to having the LVM or the logical volume. Uh, where we specified it should mount in FSTAB. And so uh, we're looking good. I guess the only thing else I wanted to say is I was confused. Uh, I thought that the FSTAB file was, uh, you know, specified where the root file system uh, should be mounted at boot. Uh, and so, uh, so I didn't understand why, you know, if I got rid of FSTAB, it still would find its way, uh, SDA1 would find its way onto the root mount point. Um, and so what happens is actually Grub, um, the bootloader, passes as a command line argument uh, to the kernel at boot uh, exactly where um, the root file system should be mounted. Um, so if I go sudo uh, cat proc command line, this is the command line argument passed to the kernel at boot. Uh, so we see boot image, uh, that was the image, and then we see root UUID, and with the UUID, and that's the UUID of SDA1, and then it's mount as read only, uh, and so that's specifying what the root file system is. Now, that can be changed in Grub, um, <clears throat> but uh, so what happens is the bootloader passes the command line, the root file system as a command line argument and read only. Uh, generally, by default, uh, to the kernel. The kernel then mounts the file system uh, in init uh, RAM FS uh, to do what it does during the boot process. And then what happens, and this actually took me a long time, kind of a long time to figure out, is uh, once uh, so once the temporary file system in init RAM FS, uh, FS is uh, pivots out and the primary file system comes in and system D is started, which is gonna be the initial uh, process that is kind of the, the father or the mother of all the other processes. System D does a couple of things and then what it does is it runs something that's called systemd-remount-fs.service. So to give you something to look at, it's systemd.remount, or excuse me, systemd dash remount dash fs dot service and what this does is that actually calls that's a program it's a process or a service inside of system d and that actually calls uh, the mount command and the mount command then reiterates or iterates through fstab and then remounts all the file systems in fstab actually not all the file systems it remounts uh, the sla uh, the root the slash user and various different API file systems and remounts those as, uh, as read write. Now, if it can't find that, it throws an error. So if we go, let me see if I can remember how to do this. Journal CTO, and so we're just gonna call, call for a sudo. Okay, so let me enlarge this here. And let's see if we can find uh, what just happened. So I think if we go Search for systemd dash remount dash fs. Pattern not found. Let's try something else here. Uh, so if we look for right where the kernel stops, 
see on the left it says Ubuntu kernel. Okay, so it goes system D. Um, go back up here. System D running in system mode, listening, mounting POSIX, mounting heap pages, mounting VMware VM block, non blocking pool initialize, auto mount mounted. At one point, I had been able to find it. Um, system D slash remount. Pattern not found. Well, uh, activating slop. I know, and this is probably pretty boring for you, uh, but I swear I found it before. Let's see here. I don't know if this was just since last boot uh, or what here. Uh, well, at any rate, uh, let's say I think there might be a man page. System D dash remount dash FS. There we go. Okay. So I'll show you the man page at least. It's somewhere in that journal system. Name is system remount uh, fs dot service um, remount root and kernel file system. So system d fs dot service is an early boot service that applies mount options listed in fstab to the root file system, the slash user file system, and the kernel API file systems. And this is required so that the mount options of these file systems, which are pre-mounted by the kernel, the initial RAM disk and the container environments or system manager code are updated to those listed in Etsy FSTAB. Um, so that right there is what's responsible for uh, you know, remounting everything as read write. Without an FSTAB file, it is unable to do that and get stuck in, uh, well, you don't get stuck, but you end up in read only mode. Once again, the command to get out of that is going to be sudo, uh, sudo mount dash o remount read write and then your specified root file system so that's it um i feel like i had something else to say but i think that's gonna be it so uh thank you again for watching and as always feedback is encouraged my name is dan uh, and have a good one